Oh yes, it's Gnome Vault time, and in this video I'm going to show you three awesome teams to use to make sure you get the most resources out of this possible, how to get those Gnome Polluters, and when to open your Vault Keys. Right, so how does this event work? And basically it's one of the most important events in the entire game. You can get an absolute ton of amazing resources from this, and the best way to do it is explain it in its most basic form. What happens is gnomes are going to come crashing randomly into your games and every time you kill a gnome that will add towards a total and when that total is reached you will earn a vault key and vault keys contain some really good treasures but also at the same time as this is happening you will kill certain gnomes which will drop a verse and when you get verses one two three and four that creates a set which you can then make a thing called a gnome palooza you then go into the soul forge and create that gnome palooza then gnomes continuously come crashing into your game for a time and you kill them as fast as possible. You're getting literally four gnome kills every few seconds and this boosts up your vault keys absolutely massively. Then once you've done that, you're going to undo your vault keys and get a load of treasure. Right, so stage one, which is the best kingdom to fight in and which are the best teams to use? Well, there are three kingdoms you want to pick on. They are Wild Plains, Sin of Mirage, and Bright Forest. And the reason is, these are some of the best kingdoms to have non-annoying troops that are made to th annoying things that are going to slow the game down, like be submerged or have a summon or gain a barrier, something like that. Like, um, my favourite one to go to for some reason is Wild Plains. I, I like it, I don't know why, but I just do. But, um, I don't want a difficulty 12, I want a difficulty 1. I'll show you three different teams. One from the um, slowest, which is still really, really fast. Going up to a ludicrously quick, quick um, super team, which is mega fast. This team is simply based around three troops, Rowan, Mirage Queen and Leprechaun. It does have a hero, you can put the hero in and just make sure they don't block Rowan. The shortest way to do that is to just put them to the bottom of the team if you like. Um, it's just there because I use this team for other purposes, but you can use it for this too. All we're going to be doing is casting a Leprechaun, it starts with a full mana, and that's going to most of the time fill up Rowan absolutely straight away because the Mirage Queen gives her a 50% start with mana. Now the reason why this is cool as well is we can use the banner of the Trident, which is plus 2 blue, plus 1 green, minus 1 yellow, and we're in Archer class. We like Archer class because we're going to get a green storm with that, which is really really handy. Um, as well as other little boosts which become actually largely irrelevant for this, but let's, um, let's show how this works. It's very fast. All we can do is cast Leprechaun, cast Roran, unless there's a four match on green or blue straight away. There's no four matches on green or blue, so we cast that, let the AI have their turn, cast Roran, the job is done. It's literally all you're going to be doing. Do this just one more time, there's no need to keep on doing it because it's literally it. It's, you get four match like we have there, you can take that, it's going to fill up Rowan straight away. Cast Rowan, that is quicker than casting Leprechaun if you get that option, because then you don't have to wait for the AI to have their turn. Right, so next team. It's a very fast Iron Hawk team. If you're lucky enough to have an Iron Hawk in your um, roster of troops, then this is a, a very, very fast team again. And again, you can include a hero in it, so you will get class XP and uh, champion talent um, XP towards towards stuff so we've got two dust devils both start with full mana deal a five damage to all enemies and knock the first enemy to last place iron hawk deals five damage to all enemies when an ally casts a spell so we don't have to even worry about the banner on this it's just a cast dust devil ai has their turn cast dust devil you don't need to worry about this if you don't want to just cast one let the ai have their turn and it would happen to have a bunch of different turns, wouldn't it? Typical. And then um, cast the other Dust Devil. That doesn't usually happen like that, but it's streamer's curse thing of making these videos of things that happen that don't usually happen when you're making a video. is quite bizarre. It's like someone somewhere knows. So we cast one. I know we've given them that four match because I didn't take it. And then you cast the other one. Job done. Right, let's get the mini boss battle out of the way and I'll show the quickest team of all, which is absolutely superb. Right, let's just take this to stop the AI from being annoying and taking it. 
There you go. Right, now for the fastest team of all. Now, I appreciate not many people will be able to run this team because it is um, a double Iron Hawk team. Uh, but this is crazy fast and you can use these same teams when doing the actual Noma Palooza, which I'll explain in a minute. What we've got here is Greed, Dust Devil, Iron Hawk, Iron Hawk. You can actually change Greed for Sister Superior if you like. Um, I do like to have Dust Devil in here for the extra little bit of damage. But where we've got two Iron Hawks, we now get 10 damage to all the enemies when an ally casts a spell. So we cast Greed first, gain a bit of gold, then cast Dust Devil and the game will be won. Again, the banner is not important, but do bear in mind for this one, you're not getting any um, XP towards your hero. And there's literally that. It's like um, they just seem to vanish. <laughs> it's like... It's like they were barely even there. And this is really fast for the Noma Palooza as well. Like, uh, you can use this team for that. And really, the speed for it. It's like, it is by far the quickest team in the game for this. By far, I mean in a relative term, because it's literally like maybe a second fast or something like that most of the time, or two seconds at best. But it does make a big difference. But saying that, I do actually still prefer to use the Rowan team a lot of the time because on my level I get extra damage from that and at the same time there's a lot of uh, different classes I don't have to level 100 yet and I don't like to think of all that uh, hero XP I'm missing out on so I'll just do this last one just to show how quickly and easily it goes through these things so mega fast right so that's the teams and that's the kingdom but now, how do you see how many Noma Palooza's you've got and if you should create one yet? Right, stage two. You've done an absolute ton of battles in Explore Level 1. You've killed an absolute load of gnomes. You must have some Noma Palooza's by now, but how do you check? Well, you check by going to your hero in the top left corner. Go to Inventory. It's quicker to press up because you go straight to the bottom that way. And then you can see these verses. Now, providing you've got at least one of each, like um, it does seem to misbalance these, like I've only got two of verse two. This basically means I can only create two Anoma Paloozas. If I had one of each of these, I'd only create one, because basically you need at least one of each type to create Anoma Palooza. And then you go to the Soul Forge, go to Other, scroll down to where it says Anoma Palooza, now, don't press this right away. You've got to only press this when you're absolutely ready to make a Noma Palooza. Because the second you press Craft, a 15-minute timer starts, and it starts absolutely immediately. If you're confident you're not going to be disturbed by a knock on the door or the cat being sick or something like that, you can actually um, craft more than one at a time. And if I crafted two, for example, this would then be a 30 minutes non-stop. So it technically saves you a little bit of time because the start period of... As soon as you press craft and you go out from this, you then have to quickly pick your team, go to the level and start the game. So in theory, it's a little bit quicker to do um, two or three in one set if you're, that, that is what you're going to do. And then, like I say, your 15 minute timer will start or a 13 minute timer will start if you've done it twice. And you're going to pick exactly the same team as what you did um, at the uh, explore stage on explore level one. Your quickest team, you will just keep on doing that again and again and again. The gnomes will come crashing in one, two, three, four, one after the other. You'll keep defeating them all the time and eventually create an absolute ton of, of vault keys. Now, you've got your vault keys, but when do you open them? Not now. Wait till the event is ended. Right, the event is ended. You've spent the last few days grinding like an absolute maniac. Everyone's wondering where you've been for the last two or three days. Your eyes are all sunken. You've got pale skin. You're all withdrawn and a bit shaky because of lack of proper nutrition but you've got a load of vault keys so all is good but um you don't cash these vault keys in during the event and the reason is basically your time is better spent getting those vault keys the rewards you get when you open them are not going to change so just get vault keys first and then you can go to your games go across to the unknown vault and you can press the button and have a look how many you've got i've only got six right now because this event hasn't started but Depending upon how much you cane this thing, you can end up with literally hundreds and then um, just spend the next time at your leisure just unlocking them all and seeing how many goodness of awesome things you've actually um, unlocked for your 
hard earned days of people wondering where you were. So that's how you do it. That is the um, best teams to get the most out of the Gnome Vault and good luck on your Gnome Vault. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and tell your guild and your cats and fish and cows and monkeys, whatever weird pets you might have. I don't know what pets you got, just tell them all. It's all good. I don't know why you tell them all because they can't speak or tell anybody else. And I go into these weird waffly bits sometimes and talk in absolute gibberish and I have no idea how it happened. But hit the like and subscribe anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time.